In the interests of honesty, I will forewarn you of my intention to use a sneaky persuasion technique on you called a presupposition. Salesmen use these type of questions to appear to be offering you a choice, when in actual fact all the responses serve the same purpose. A good example of a presupposition that might have been used on you as a young child, perhaps unwittingly, by your parents would be, do you want to go to bed now or in 10 minutes time? The question appears to give you the luxury of choice, but all outcomes result in the same thing. You in bed within 10 minutes. So my sneaky question to you is this. Do you want to stop drinking completely or just cut down a bit and then have to repeat this course every time you lose control again until you stop? Obviously, I'm trying to gently push you in the direction I know you should go. And despite telling you the option to cut down has repeated failure built into it, your ego still thinks it's in control and can handle anything. Be certain of this. Your ego doesn't want you to stop drinking because it predicts that that will result in pain and fear in the future. I know many listeners would prefer to cut down rather than stop, but the only logical solution for you is to step out of the mousetrap completely and never get back in. If you are dependent upon alcohol and you don't want to stop, you have not quite grasped the problem. If a heroin addict came up to you and said, I've decided only to use drugs on a Tuesday and never any other day, how confident are you that if you bumped into him again in a few years' time that that still would be the case? Alcoholism is a binary condition. It's either on or off. It's ones and zeros. You can't be a little bit alcoholic in the same way that you can't be a little bit pregnant. You may need to listen to this book over and over before you get to this point and your decision is in harmony with my advice. Stopping completely really is the best option for you, but you must come to that decision on your own. You can't be convinced by me, your family or friends, and nobody can order you to take this stance. It has to come deep from within you. Now, if you don't currently feel like that, if you're still at the point where you believe you can control your drinking or that you enjoy it too much to stop completely, don't panic or beat yourself up too much. You're not alone in this struggle. Go to my website and find people like you. You'll find people who've been through the process and come out the other side, and you'll find people in exactly the same position as you. But let me tell you, nobody has ever developed a drink problem and then woke up the next morning cured in some sort of eureka moment of perfection. It does take a bit of work and a bit of persistence on your part. Part of the journey to sobriety is experiencing the futility of trying to find ways to keep the bits you like while removing the consequences that you don't. It's like trying to bail out the Titanic with a bucket. For a while, you may believe that you're making headway, but very soon you start to see that you can't possibly succeed. I tried dozens and dozens of different buckets before I came to the realisation that the good parts of drinking go hand in hand with the bad. You can't have one without the other. Here are just a few of the buckets that I thought might bail out my sinking ship. I decided one day, right, I'll only drink at the weekends. That's how I'm going to control my drinking. Then I said, I'll only drink socially and never at home. I'll drink a glass of water for every glass of alcohol I drink. That didn't work. I'll take three months off the drink each year. I rarely made it to the three months. I'll only drink beer and no wine or spirits. I'll only drink wine with food as part of a meal. Add to that list of ridiculous theories the expensive prescription drugs I turned to. The first I tried was called disulfiram, which interferes with the way your liver processes alcohol and makes you violently ill if you drink. The problem with this drug is it relies on your discipline to take it every morning. Alcoholics are not really renowned for their discipline. Initially, if I knew there was a big party or social occasion I was going to, I just wouldn't take it. And so begins the failure routine. Predictably, I then loosened my rules further by only taking it Monday to Friday, allowing myself to drink at the weekends. I convinced myself that I deserved a treat at the weekends for being so good during the week. The next stage of my defiance came when I resented the drug preventing me from drinking during the week, and I experimented with it and found I could just about tolerate a small beer while taking it. Any more than that and the side effects would knock me flat on my back. One night I pushed it a little further and had a large beer and a glass of wine. 
Within 20 minutes, my head was pounding, my face blushing bright red, while my heart felt like it was trying to beat its way out of my chest. For a moment, I honestly thought I might die, and the only solution was to lie in a dark room motionless for several hours until the effects subsided. I tried other drugs too, such as a camprosate calcium, which interferes with the release of dopamine, essentially taking all the pleasure out of drinking. Over time, it renders your favourite tipple as pleasurable as a soft drink, and logically, you only want to drink one of those when you're thirsty. Again, with this drug, the willpower or discipline required to take a daily tablet that ruins the very thing that you're addicted to is a significant challenge. Add to that some pretty horrendous side effects from dizzy spells, insomnia, dry mouth and worse, and you start to think that feeling this bad to stay off the drink is simply not worth it. Whether it's crazy routines or pills, they are all simply evidence of the ego's delusion that it is in some way in control. All these methods use a form of willpower that can't possibly work, because underneath the smokescreen you still believe that alcohol is a benefit that you are being deprived of. Remember, there is no such thing as failure. Things that go wrong are just events in the past that teach you lessons. A time period we are no longer concerned with. If you finish reading this book and then go three weeks without a drink and slip up, the natural temptation and the ego's opinion is to think that this book doesn't work and you are not strong enough, or you are destined to always be a problem drinker. Recognize this belief for what it is, the conscious mind trying to predict the future, a skill that it simply doesn't have. If you fall off the wagon, big deal. Dust yourself down and carry on. When you wake in the morning, what is the point of beating yourself up about a mistake you made the night before? The past no longer exists. Presumably, you haven't woken up with a bottle in your hand having been drinking in your sleep somehow. So right there in that moment when you wake up, where all of life has lived, in the moment, you are not a drinker. Equally, now that we know that the future also doesn't exist and will never exist, the fact that you had a drink the night before has no bearing on whether you will have one later that day, tomorrow, the next day, or ever again. So you made a mistake, big deal. Take each moment as it comes. Every second that you decide you don't want to drink is a success. The secret to stopping drinking is the same as the secret to getting anything else in life that you want. And this is to remain in the moment. Don't make predictions about what sort of person you will be in the future, whether you'll be a drinker or not. I wouldn't ask you to predict what will happen tomorrow any more than I would ask you to perform open heart surgery on me. You simply do not have the skills to help me. Now, of course, I'm recklessly playing the numbers game here, and one day this audiobook will be listened to by an eminent heart surgeon, and he will be mortally offended at that statement, but I'll take my chances and assume you're not. Your journey out of the mousetrap happens by being aware of your egoic mind. Every time you find your mind wandering into the future or the past, observe this happening from the point of view of an outsider. Disconnect yourself from the process. Catch your ego at work. For your conscious mind, for your ego to have any power at all, it needs you to believe that you and it are one and the same thing. If you see it for what it is, a minor part of your mind at work, it loses its influence. Every time you catch your mind starting to worry, predict or reflect on past events, deliberately pull yourself back into the present moment. And at that point, you reduce its power over you by a fraction of 1%. For most people, the conscious mind seizes control of them 10,000 times a day, and so this process isn't a magic bullet cure. I can't promise if you do this 10 times, 20 times, or 50 times, then you will be cured. But then you didn't become alcohol dependent overnight, and no system out there can hope to restore the correct balance in a similar brief period of time. Most other detox systems require a period of withdrawal, often called going cold turkey, which for an alcoholic is at best torturous, and in worst cases can be fatal. My method starts with your deep-seated desire to end this painful cycle, and slowly deconstructs the obstacles preventing you from achieving your goal. Slowly, over time, as you keep resisting the attempted hijackings by your egoic mind, you will feel a sense of peace begin to build. Once you get beyond the physical dependence on alcohol, your urge to drink is generated by the wants and needs of the ego. As this reduces, so does your desire for alcohol. A popular question at this point is, how long will it take? Look, I can't predict the future any more than you can, so I won't even try and give you a specific prediction. 
For most people, once they understand that everything they previously believed about alcohol being a benefit was a big fat lie, and then they can see that a chemical imbalance is causing pain for the ego to respond to, they just simply stop drinking. For a great many people, that is directly after listening to this book. Others need a few weeks for the information to stink in, and others read this book several times before the penny drops. Whether it takes a day or a year is irrelevant. You will find this simple process will not only remove your damaging patterns around alcohol, but also all other negative habits too. Denying the ego will slowly repair everything from relationships to finances. If you want to go into greater detail about how it works, then I suggest you read my book Swallow the Happy Pill and The God Enigma. Once your conscious mind begins to loosen its grip on your perception of reality, this system becomes easier and easier. The secret to success is to stick at this long enough to become aware of a shift in power. So for the next 21 days, I'm going to ask you to commit to doing four things every day. This does not mean that after 21 days, you are no longer dependent on alcohol or that you can just stop and return to your old ways. I just know that if you diligently follow these four steps for that period, you will start to see something amazing happening in your life. In the next chapters of the book, I'll tell you what those four things are.